G'day team, once again, welcome back to Q Manufacturing. I am Matt, as always, and today I have a treat for you. We're embarking on a journey. We're returning to the good stuff, the black magic carbon fiber. In case the title didn't give it away, we're going to make a wing. Normally, this wing is for a race car, though the same principles can be used for anything wing-like. A plane, a hydrofoil, you just may need to reconsider your mounting method. This video will be the start of a multi-part project. I'm aiming for about three parts, but don't hold me to it. Let's just see how it goes. And before you get too excited, I'm not made of money and I'm only doing this as preparation for something else. So I'm only making a smallish wing of about 700 millimeters width. The technique is completely transposable to a wing of any width, thickness, cord or profile. At the end of this whole ordeal, if it comes out all right, I might give the wing to someone who watches my videos. If you have a use for it, then drop me a line in the comments or on my website and I'll work something out. I'll be back to the normal format this time. We'll start with some background, then go into the build and then cover off some of the lessons learned. The times are on the screen now and they're also linked in the comments below if you want to jump ahead and just get over my whole talking side of things. Let's start with a bit of aerodynamics initially and then work our way up from that. The airfoil that I have selected is an E423. It has a maximum thickness of 12.5% at 23.7% cord and a maximum camber of 9.5% at 41.4% cord. It's got some bend to it. Importantly, it has a coefficient of lift of around 2 as a single element and a coefficient of drag around 0.01 for most of the range, pushing up to 0.02 with a high coefficient of lift figure. So what does this mean? This airfoil will not be very good in a high speed track car, like circuit or oval racing. It has a relatively high drag at low downforce numbers, and the drag curve is pretty flat when prepared to the angle of attack, which essentially means there is no speed benefit for flattening this wing. So you really just want to run it no lower than 5 degrees angle of attack, and just get as much downforce from it as possible. So what is it good for then? Well, it makes a bunch of lift, and I do mean a bunch of lift, around about the 10 degree angle attack point, with only a modest increase in drag from the rest of the curve. So if you have an application where you're grip limited, and want an airfoil that will give you as much downforce as possible for a given wing size, then this is right up your alley. I would say that a typical use case would be for street sprints, autocross, gymkhana, etc. The car isn't going fast enough for long enough to be concerned about drag penalties, you just want as much downforce as you can fit into a package, and you only plan on really using the wing settings to balance out the front and rear of the car for handling as opposed to getting that straight line speed. In the course of doing this project, I've used airfoiltools.com as a resource for my geometry as well as the lifted drag data. The properties are generated from Xfoil, which while only providing theoretical airfoil properties is a very good starting point for wing development. Links to both of these are down below. Onto the structure, this wing structural design is based loosely on the Rutan Long Easy wing with a few key design differences. I'm swapping out the fiberglass for carbon changing the PVC style foam for expanded polystyrene and adding a second spar and redoing the calculations to size the skins and ribs of this application. The important takeaways and similarities are that this will be a moldless wing design. You can do it in your shed with no molds, no vacuum pads, nothing, nada. The workflow is based around making a foam wing shape, cutting out spar locations and then laying them up on the foam, then laying up the skins on top of that, again on the foam. If you're using a structural foam, the foam stays there and forms the core material. If you're using a non-structural foam, like I am, then you can leave it there or you can remove it after the wing is cured. I'll be leaving the foam in mine, as while it is non-structural, it still offers some sheer transfer between the skins and it also weighs next to nothing. I'll be using a front and rear wing spar at 25 and 60% of the cord respectively. These will be made from 45 degrees by axial carbon cloth with an approximate thickness of 2mm. Prior to the spars being laid up, I'll install drilled and tapped metal blocks which will bond to the spar and be the mounting points for the wing after it's manufactured. The wing will be skinned with 1.6mm of carbon with alternating layers running at 090 and 4545. I've used a spreadsheet as a calculator to work out all the critical parameters on this wing. It's linked in the description below on my website if you want to have a poke around. It is a design tool, it doesn't give you all the answers, so use it at your own risk. Essentially I've used it to analyse deflections, stresses and bolt loads at various places on the wing and size the spar and skin thicknesses to bring them all into a range that I'm comfortable with. If you do decide to use it, please read the comments attached to the various cells for more information and use it at your own risk. So that's the wing basics sorted. To make the form, I'm going to use extruded polystyrene foam board that you can get from most hardware stores as insulation sheets for relatively cheap. It's easy to form and can be cut with a hot wire cutter with very little effort. So I think that's enough theory and background for now. Let's get into the build. First up, I need a hot wire cutter. To build this hot wire cutter, I've got two pieces of wood here. It's a 42mm by 19mm by 1.2mm long. Uh, I've got some screw eyelets that will hold the wire, and then I have some nichrome wire back here. It's a 0.3mm long, 0.3mm wide. I think it's a 20, 28 gauge, um, and it's just going to get nice and hot. 
It will maintain its integrity and it will cut through things. All right, so the first thing we have to do is cut our frame that's going to hold our hot wire cutter down to size. This is just tension by using this little sliding knot here. And we can get the whole thing to a nice little tension. I present to you wire cutter 1.0. It's 1.2 meters in between the arms. It's tensioned through the use of the string in the back. And it's powered by approximately 48 volts DC. The question is though, does it cut? Got a piece of polystyrene foam here, nice and small. That cuts. So next up we just need to make our uh, rough stock or rough out our stock to then make our templates for our wing. Uh, I'm just using 89mm by 19mm by 1.2 metres. Um, that's a couple of inches by three quarter inch by four foot. Uh, I've chosen this instead of a bit of plywood because it's cheap and it's going to work. It's like $8 for the length or $6 for the length. Plywood's a lot more expensive. It is a bit thick for my template, but it's, uh, it's cheap. So what we have here is our template. This is our one-to-one uh, -one scale and then this is our raw stock depiction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one-to-one -one scale here and I'm going to mark out and then draw these holes. Notice it's cut off on the edge here. You can see the full picture there. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this other side here so that the tessellate, I don't waste material. I know I said it was cheap, but still, waste not, whatnot. Um, so these are the holes I'll use to draw down. That'll be the zero point there, as you can see in the corner here. And then same for this side up here. So I'm just going to get onto that now and then we'll go over to the mill. So these holes serve two purposes. Uh, the first is to bolt or screw the material down onto the mill. How good is that? That is a problem. And you know what the problem is? Alright, so this is a problem. This always is measured twice, cut once. So that dimension here, 300 mil with 50 mil overlap. I have drawn my lines at 200 mil. So let's just extend that line out there a little bit. And we'll come back to this. All 
So as I was saying, these holes here are being used for two purposes. The first one is to screw the material down onto the mill um, so that I can then cut it out and it will hold both of the two components. It will hold both of these two parts down uh, while we machine away the rest of the material. So that's part one. Part two is then it's also used for the jigging of the material. So these two pieces here will make two of these wing sections and two of these uh, bottom base support brackets we'll call them. These duvalakis here are going to hold the templates off the table at the same height so I can connect them to the foam so then I can do the CNC, not CNC, the hot wire cutting um, on the foam template to turn the block of foam into the wing shape. So holding them all in the mill with the screws, good to go and uh, let's just get some drill holes in there. I'm using my CNC router to cut these templates out. There's no need to do that at all. You can print them out and glue them to a board and do it by hand. Or mark out the board using the wing profile coordinates you have and then hand cut. I have a CNC router, so I'm going to use a CNC router. You know the saying, when all you have is a CNC router, everything looks like a nail. So on the bottom of these ribs here, on the bottom of these templates here, you can see that they've got the alignment marks. Uh, the alignment marks are actually the spar locations as well. So we need to have nice sharp edges so that the, uh, the wire can drop down in there. Um, those spars lock into these two parts here, kind of like this. All right, so we just need to clean up those edges because we had a six mil end mil there and uh, you know, we can't get a small enough radius to fit in there with like a two mil depth. So we're just gonna clean up those uh, those little edges there make them a bit, bit sharper, and uh, from there uh, we had to continue. You can see it's a nice lock-in fit there, so that locates the wing properly. All right, so back here, and hopefully you can, now you can see how this whole jig setup works. We have this duvalaki down here as a support that then holds the template in. It locks into the template into the wing spar locations, front and rear, through these two little tabs here. It holds the um, template up at an appropriate level so that we can ensure that the whole thing is inside the foam surface. From there, we have the templates aligned using this straight edge here, a spacer block to ensure that the average finish end down here, you can see there's like some divots in there, uh, isn't actually incorporated in this cut. Um, and the same thing is replicated at the other end, so that these templates are in the same distance roughly from the front edge. All we have to do from here is to put some screws through here so we can hold the whole thing in place and then take it over to the hot wire cutter. All right, so here's our uh, hot wire setup, and now we're just going to carefully trace around the template and try not to burn our hands. Let's take some chunks off it first. Now 
that wire needs some more tension. And you'll note the smoke coming out of this, so make sure you do this in a well-ventilated area. So as you can probably tell, that hasn't worked out too well. It doesn't have a particularly nice surface finish and I've paused in certain places and caught the wire and dragged in other places. Um, I'm going to leave this video here and I'm going to go away and I'm going to make some changes to my whole setup here and try and come back and you know, finish this off. I know it's possible. I know that I've just done it wrong. So with that, we're going to stop the build. We're going to have a quick chat about lessons learned. There's not many of them. Um, and then we'll bid you adieu. So the main lesson learned out of today is use the correct tool for the correct job. Uh, the end mill I was using on the, the router was a 4 flute, 6 mil diameter by 40 mil cutting, um, which is quite a long, quite a long end mill, um, and I was pushing it really hard at too slow a speed through that wood. So I was taking a, a 3 mil width of cut, a 7 mil depth of cut at 2.3 meters a minute, um, and with the amount of stick out there was there, there was too much chatter and the thing just snapped. Yes, you can snap high-speed steel in wood. Um, so I've now lost an end mill that I use quite regularly. It's usually used on this foam stuff um, just to cut foam out. It's pretty good because you can go big depths of cuts and big speeds and it will cut through a, a large range. And I was using it because I just didn't think about it and I put the wrong 6 mil bit in and I didn't then think about my speeds and speeds and they were entirely inappropriate for that cut. So that's my lesson learned out of today. Um, I've lost an end mill, I'll have to buy a new one, and I'll have to buy some more 6 mil ones as well. Just a bit shorter ones, so I have a bit more stiffness. Um, there's some lessons learned out of this, but I don't know what they are yet. Uh, once I get to them and I work it out, I'll be sure to let you all know. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time, hopefully, with a completed wing. Cheers.